Hello and welcome back to the universe of God where we are uncovering the truth about the plagues of Egypt and Babylon and we're discovering that we are in fact the ones plagued by Babylon and Egypt. Um, in the Old Testament they had plagues um, and those plagues came as a judgment on the most powerful nation in the world uh, who perpetrated not only a false religion uh, but Satanism in many forms um, and they did it by hiding behind false light and today we you know we are seeing Egypt has been resurrected the symbolism is everywhere our kids are wearing the clothing they're getting the tattoos everybody in entertainment from you know sports to acting to poli I mean politics they they are you know covered in this symbolism to some extent and they are telling us who they are and what they represent now in this uh, video I'm going to start where I left off and we were talking about the chakras there are seven spiritual centers inside of us one is the root chakra okay this is uh, you know the Kundalini talks about uh, starting at the root at the bottom now I am not here promoting uh, I'm not promoting deception I'm promoting truth God created the spiritual centers and I'm going to share a video on that that I'm you know also working on that is showing you um, about the spiritual centers the third eye and the seven churches um, but we're not going to go into that here but God created the spiritual centers and he created the third eye and I believe it was created as a communication device between us and him it was the throne it was the seat in which he was going to occupy with his children and that uh, has been hijacked in many ways um, the Bible says if your eye be full of light uh, how great is that light but if your eye is full of darkness how great is that darkness because this eye is hidden it's the mind's eye okay and if we want to talk about the virus of the crown we might see that we are being pointed to a spiritual center called the crown chakra. And if you notice, the third eye comes before the crown chakra. The spiritual centers are open bottom to top in that order because there is a process, okay? We work out our salvation. Um, and when we get to this third eye, this is a highly intuitive eye. Um, this is, is a very powerful place. Um, and Satan wishes to exalt his throne, um, you know, above the stars and sit in the seat of God. And this is something that we think of physically, but we need to think of it spiritually. This is where he seeks to rule and sit in God's place, is right here in your spiritual centers. And, you know, we got to start thinking not so literal. Um, we have to start thinking, God, Jesus taught in parables, you know, metaphors, allegory, parables to tell us deeper truths. And so, you know, we're talking about a virus of the crown and we are living in a world where the third eye is such a big deal. It is so popularized and we go as ignorant children playing with forces we don't understand and opening ourselves up to demonic possession, oppression and spiritual wickedness in heavenly places right now the trends of our culture have become heavily satanic with goat symbolism and goats represented the sin in the bible sheep were god's children innocent okay childlike but the goat was opposite we we're being visited we're being uh not visited but we're being in an undated now with this egyptian symbolism pyramid symbolism opening of the third eye also called the pineal in the bible the third eye can be full of light or darkness this is important so you can open it but you can open it to more darkness or to the true light opening the third eye is difficult and can open you up to spiritual dimensions and entities that you don't want to know the third eye is where we seek to see the face of God, where we seek to know Him, and, and we delight in Him. We get enlightenment for, from Him. We get insight. We get clarity. 
we see things differently. But without going through the door of Christ, the Lamb of God, we are subject to false light. We are subject to what is really darkness masquerading as light. And if you know anything about the Bible, you will know that Satan masquerades as an angel of light because he used to be an angel of light. So something interesting to notice about the seven chakras, uh, as one source puts it, the crown chakra is the seventh chakra. Hmm. It's located at the top of the head not the center, the top. This is the crowning effect of opening your spiritual centers, of being enlightened, you know, of being on the mountaintop with God, you know, and and knowing him. I mean, oh gosh, if you know what that's like, it's like opening the crown chakra, okay? It represents states of higher consciousness and divine connection. But imbalanced attributes would be cynicism, and disregarding what is sacred, closed-mindedness and disconnection with the spirit. What's interesting is when we see people sun, you know, sun tanning their buttholes and sitting out openly in the daylight, naked and exposed uh, with their asses to the sun, what we see is a disregard for what is sacred, okay? What we see is a disconnection with the Holy Spirit. Um, and so we see the opposite of what would come when you open, when you get to the crown chakra. Uh, but to get to the crown chakra, you got to go through the mind's eye. The third eye chakra is the sixth chakra. Hmm. Six is the number of man. It's located in the center of the forehead between the eyes. Um, and it represents intuition and foresight and more things. Um, It's driven by openness and imagination, so this source says, but imbalanced attributes would be a lack of direction and clarity. So when we're opening this third eye, um, depending on how we open it, we can experience clarity and direction, um, you know, more intuitiveness. We can see things through the spirit, but, uh, Again, this place, this is a powerful place, and it is not to be played with. Uh, And if this eye is open through a false entity, through the wrong way, okay, then you're going to experience some problems. Your, Your light is now darkness. Your enlightenment is not real enlightenment. It's false, okay? You, Your enlightenment is what these people reflect. False light, okay? Deception. Um, Satanism, okay? The goat, the sin, fallen nature, okay? So these things are very serious and they're not taught um, in the church because many people are afraid to teach on these things uh, because they're associated with mysticism and dark magic and all these things. But the truth is God created all of these things for his glory, for himself, for us to commune with him. And these things have been uh, used for evil. And how do you know when it's being used for evil? You will see symbolism like what you see on Tom Hanks' son. And what you see on, uh, I forget the actor's name, who's now leading a cult movement. Uh, and, and, and you you know, your entertainers, the people who have all the money, the people who are on the screens presenting this false religion to you, that's how you'll know if it's darkness or light because it will lead you away from the one true God and into the worship of many gods um, and into, you know, worship as darkness, but you are reflecting that it's light. When it's not, you're deceiving, you're a deceiver and you're of your father, the devil. How? Because you look This is what you represent. And all these things are tied back to Egypt and darkness. And that's why Egypt is, you know, its splendor and glory is no more, nor will it ever be again. um, Because it was judged, it was destroyed, it was plagued. And God pulled his people out of it. He pulled the true light out of the false light. And he is doing that today. And I share these images because I want you to see, you know, this is the culture. This is trending. This is popular culture. And this is light that is not light, but darkness. 
uh, pretending to be light so that you will be led to it, seeking God, seeking truth, and end up in the hands of many gods and confusion. And this is the state of the world, okay? The Old Testament uh, and New Testament are mirroring each other here. And I'll just share a few more clips uh, to kind of drive home what I'm talking about with this third eye. And um, this is the eye that you open before you get to the crown chakra. Now we see that, uh, you know, Beyonce's here uh, being worshipped. She's pregnant. She's with child. Um, she's referred to herself as uh, the goddess Shiva. And the you know, goddess Shiva can be male or female, god of destruction and recreation. Um, she is, you know, she's mimicking gold. That's Egypt, okay? Um, and then she has this crown over her head um, because she is deifying herself right here publicly. Uh, and these people turn entertainment and they turn uh, performances into ritualistic ceremonies. Uh, for the world to see um, and be dazzled by them. And they are. This is Katy Perry. She's famous, you know. Uh, and her videos reflect a lot of spiritual darkness that's dressed up in childlikeness to appeal to the youth. And so, again, these people are leading people away from the true God and they're leading them into the false light. They think they are enlightened. Um, but they are not truly enlightened. And, you know, they're, if they were honest with themselves, they would know that because their rituals and their lifestyles are evidence of the fact that they are not enlightened at all. Um, but their light is dark, okay? And it draws people, uh, brings people to the false light. It brings people into deception and slavery and bondage um, into very, you know, dark things. So, uh, you know, we know the rumors about Hollywood and all these things. These things are true. They're not rumors. I mean, it's just, it's a mess. Um, and right now we're seeing in our world uh, a lot of uh, exposing of darkness, of child, you know, child pedophilia, you know, just the most despicable things that wealthy people who they call elites um, are doing and how they're puppeteering people uh, and, and really really playing games with with people on a large scale um but anyhow uh lord shiva who beyonce is called um by some and referred to herself uh lord shiva's half man half woman that's interesting okay considering everything is about being trans right now being confused and mixed up and not even owning one identity this concept of an avatar and an alternate ego and all these things that split us into two um, when really we're split into two already we have a good and a bad okay we we, we contend with that uh in our lives and the goal is to eventually over come and subdue the bad and reign and rule you know in the true light in, in, in our true selves you know our best selves um not to be multiple people multiple personalities not to be man and woman no um that's you know again this is this is false light. This is darkness. Um, so it says Lord Shiva opens his third eye to destroy someone or something. When he opens his third eye, a bright light comes from the third eye along with heat. Hmm. When that light and heat falls on someone, that person is destroyed into ashes. So this this third eye is destructive. Uh, you know, it's like it sounds like a laser beam, right? Um, it, it sounds very powerful. Uh, and, and, and very destructive and it really is uh, you know, there's a Bible passage that says you know they will try to break through the gate of God but they will not succeed because they come as thieves and robbers and you cannot break through the gate of God you cannot break through the third eye like a thief and a robber because what's going to happen is when you get to the crown you're going to get you're going to get judged. Um, you're going to be destroyed because you've tried to break into the gate of God as a thief or robber. And that is not acceptable. You have to come through the door and the way, which is Christ. 
And we're going to come back in video three and go further.